Providence Church family, good morning. My name is Gary Henderson, and I'm one of the pastors here, and I am so blessed to be here today. Um, I'm just still reflecting on that. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. It's uh, still kind of going like a musical loop. That's a new lyric for me, and I, I simply love it. Thank you, uh, those who lead us in singing so faithfully every week. I invite you to listen to the guiding scripture for our summer series from Colossians and ask that you allow the words to settle deeply into your heart, your mind, and your soul. The word of Christ must live in you richly. Teach and warn each other with all wisdom by singing psalms hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Let us pray. Eternal God, I stand before you as an empty pitcher before a full fountain. Please enliven and animate this dusty clay pot. We are hungry for a word. So breathe on me, breathe upon us, that we might hear from you. And upon hearing, may we become doers who offer hope and healing wherever we go. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. I am certain that I knew song before I knew scripture. I did not know the Bible verse read just a moment ago, but I worshiped in a faith community that lived this text in Colossians. I grew up singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, or as we said in the deep south in Jackson, Mississippi, I was raised singing. Maybe some of you were raised singing. Both Easter and Christmas required a musical, a musical cantata in our home church. And my mother was always sure that we all participated. I can still remember the lyrics which were most often based in Scripture, and I can even remember the solo parts that I sometime had to joy to sing. I remember with gratitude how the songs of praise sometimes overwhelmed the worshiping community and spilled over into tears and shouting. Yes, shouting Methodists. <laughs> I can even call them today by name. Today, as I think about the songs and I, as I think about the singing, I am grateful for their witness to a faith that was vibrant and a faith that was alive. These saints understood at a soul level while singing spiritual songs what Jesus meant when he said, if they keep quiet, they keep quiet. These stones will start shouting. Music shaped and formed me without my awareness of its power. I suspect that music still performs the same function. It is shaping and forming us today without full awareness of its power and its influence. Sometimes, we can get a song in our heads, and we just can't get it out. Maybe you leave worship some Sundays, and there's a song that's still playing in a loop. It's like you cannot hit the pause button, and the broken button is broken. The hymnody of the church shaped my theological understanding that is to say, the hymns shape the way I think about God. To be honest, they shaped me more than Bible did, at least for a while. The hymns were my primary teacher. 
Hymns were just part of the daily diet. I can still remember singing, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise and to know, thus saith the Lord." We sang all the verses. We sang all the verses this morning and a couple of new ones that I had not heard. We sang the song because the song was speaking to us. I remember singing the hymn. The refrain is in my mind just now from trust and obey. It says, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. We sang all the verses. But I, I can still see him. He visited about twice a year in the congregation where we worshiped. He had been raised in that congregation, and he had a beautiful baritone voice that had the resonance of an angel, and, and whenever he was present, he would sing these words, I trust in God wherever I may be, upon the land and on the rolling sea, for come what may from day to day, my heavenly Father watches over me. And then that beautiful refrain that the congregation would join, I trust in God, I know he cares for me. On mountain bleak and on the stormy sea, the billows roll, he keeps my soul. My heavenly Father watches over me. I still remember how the congregation, without prompting, joined in the singing. To me, it sounded like a heavenly choir. And now, hold on. Get ready for the breaking news. Music is not a spectator event. It requires participation. Still more breaking news. There is no tonal requirement for congregational singing. Somebody ought to say hello. There are no auditions for congregational singing. The psalmist says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And some of you are thinking, that's just what I do, make a noise. But it is joyful unto the Lord. Sing anyway because singing is liberating. Additional breaking news. One cannot sing and be in a foul mood. You just try. It is impossible. The journey down memory lane has purpose today. Stay with me. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the German theologian, describes the unique experience of singing this way. It is the voice of the church that is heard in singing together. It is not you that sings. It is the church that is singing. And you, as a member of the church, may share in the song. Singing requires participation in mystery. When we sing, our voices are joined with those seen and unseen. So many have sung the same song, and we join in that chorus and song together. Music this summer. Music today is still forming and shaping us without full awareness of its influence. Sometimes I get a song in my head and I just can't get it out. It feels like it's on repeat. The pause button and the stop button are broken. One of my recent experiences is a song that we often sing here at Providence Church. It is the blessing song written by Jobian Carnes. 
Many sing it without the awareness that the song is rooted in Scripture. Here the verse, the three verses from Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The verses inspired the blessing song that in the midst of the recent pandemic, there were days that I simply could not get the lyrics out of my head. No pause button, no stop button. Listen to just a few of the lyrics. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Oh, I love this, these lines. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and your children and their children in the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and your rejoicing. He is with you. He is with you. The truth is, and this is the truth, in my personal YouTube archive, I have 23 versions of that song sang around the world in many languages. And there are some days I'll sit and I'll go through all 23 as the song does its work in and through me. The journey down memory lane has purpose. The hymnody of the church, without my being conscious or aware, was providing a theological landing place for me in faith. Many of you already know where I landed. All I know for sure is that I landed in this place, and so here I stand, my landing place before God. God can be trusted. I really don't have to say it anymore. God can be trusted. Oh, say that with me one time. God can be trusted. You may ask me how I know that. I just know that I 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 know that God can be trusted. Because God has a track record with Gary. And I don't have time in this moment to recount all his deeds in my own life. Contemporary worship lyrics like, he is with you, he is with you, remind me that God can be trusted. Hymns and spiritual songs help me to arrive in this place well before, long before, Bible did, but now I must speak Bible because I believe that Bible must always inform our spiritual songs. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. This passage was a favorite Bible verse for my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law. She believed Bible verses were so important that she hand wrote on small pieces of paper in a barely legible cursive script, more than a hundred of these, and brought them to family reunion about 30 years ago. Bible was so important to her that she wanted her nine surviving children and the five generations present to have her favorite Bible verses in her own hand. She knew that God could be trusted. The verses from Proverbs were among the verses that she insisted 
She insisted as I would talk to her from time to time. She would say, Gary, now at my funeral one day, you be sure that we read these verses. When we honored that request many, many years later, as I ponder the two verses from Proverbs today, I'll offer several considerations that at least in this moment feel like a homework assignment for you. Several things about trust found in those two verses. Trust requires heart. Trust requires head. Trust requires habit. Trust requires him and him. We all forgot our hearts, the very center of our being. We all forgot our, our heads, our understanding, and our intellect. We all forgot our habits, you know, the paths that we go down, the choices that we make. We surrender to him, the Lord Jesus, and we surrender to the power of the him. Surely, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Those who trust in God are like Zion Mountain. Nothing can move it. A rock, solid mountain you can always depend on. As I take my time moving to a close. Y'all get the hint? <laughs> I have a song to offer that I hope will begin to play like a tape without a pause or a stop button. It is a song born out of sorrow and pain and unimaginable suffering. It is a uniquely American song it is a song from the genre typically described as a Negro spiritual. Its authorship is unknown, but its message is so clear. Sorrow and trials do not have to hinder praise. Trouble does not have to make us whine. Suffering does not have to make us soak, and it does not hinder our singing. Hardship does not eliminate the carol. For the unknown authors, oppression was their unwanted companion. Suffering was their unwelcomed roommate. Yet their hardship birthed hymns and spiritual songs. They embodied the guiding text from Colossians 3:16. In a strange land, enslaved people, African Americans sang a song of survival that still resonates across the full spectrum of humanity. My song offering today shaped me theologically. The words were, teacher, it is a song I remember singing with gusto. It is a fun song. If you surrender to the lyrics, it is a song that can take you to the place of overflow. It is a simple song without many lyrics, and it is repetitive. As the worshiping community sings it, the verses can even multiply in the moment. News break again, didn't require an audition, didn't even require instruments. It simply required that those offering the song will be willing to make a joyful noise. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die.
remember singing those words. And often in that moment, there were other verses that, would bo that were born in the moment. Preacher, somebody might look at your preacher and say, Preacher, will you trust in the Lord? Turn to your, your neighbor and say, Neighbor, will you trust in the Lord? Turn to your, your sister and say, Will you trust in the Lord? Sometimes the words were birthed and born in community. They might go something like, We'll watch, fight, and pray in the Lord. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I want us to just kind of sing that one more time together. Very softly with the music. Very softly with the music. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die. Let's just hum it one time. I will trust in the Lord. Will you trust in the Lord? Finally, God can be trusted. Hallelujah. Amen.